All right. All right. Alondra is going off to pee. I suppose I can look around. Whoa, what? Did she attempt to do a, a kick and then fell on her side? Oh. Oh, what's that? It looks like it goes up. Can you actually use these as pathways? Oh. Looks like you can, but is there anything to this? Or is it just the twisting of the metal? Ooh, a juicy melon. Where did that come from? Yeah, there are just all these pathways. Eh. Hmm. What is this go to? A gold condenser. I don't know what that is, but it's interesting. But yeah, Dixon was definitely suspicious. Oh, that's interesting. And I still suspect that Eagle... Or Egil? The guy who's in the gold mech on was once a high NTI. He just has that, the armor has that NTI look to it. Whoa, that's a little bit too far. Ouch, sorry. Oh, we do have all these goodies, whatever they are. YouTube sil silver? It's a Tron gooseberry. Huh, interesting. Yeah, so... Zanza... He existed on this planet before everything else was born into existence, by the looks of it. Oh, that's one of the... One of the kind of mechs that the humans would be able to ride inside. So Zanza witnessed the battle between the Mechonis and the Bionis. It's interesting, though, because the Bionis could be made of organic matter, and but the Mechonis would have had to have been created by something. But the very origins of the, mech, the mechs themselves are could be subject to a lot of scrutiny. Ged Fortress. Probably a minor fortress. Don't know if there's anything inside it, but I'll collect what's outside of it. I don't believe I'm getting too close to that flag. A purple lamp? You know, what was the second? A fire pepper. What's in here? Anything of interest? A darkness bottle. And what is this? A gate lock release. Oh, is there a gate out here that I have to be concerned with? Maybe it's this. That does look like a gate. Would probably allow us to go through the mountain. Collect a couple more items just to see. Or wait a minute. Oh, there are enemies in there. This must be another part of the fortress. I'll go there in a moment. Another darkness bottle. What are these items? Let's see. Ah, I did not intend to go into run mode. Okay, it wasn't the skill tree or the arts, and I don't believe it's the map, is it? Oh, and I pressed B, didn't I? Collectibles are down here, there we go. 
do we have so far in Sword Valley? Looks like we did collect quite a number of things. We have Fire Pepper. So hot, you'll think you're on fire. Actually, you are on fire. Whoops. A meaty carrot. Wait. How could a carrot be meaty? Unless it's both tender and... Oh yeah, it's so succulent. You can't help but feeling it's animal flesh and not vegetable. Ooh. Fruit. We have bitter melon. The tangy taste of this melon strengthens as it ripens. The Tron gooseberry. It tastes good at first, but it gets so sour as you chew that you feel sick. Oh. Ew. Juicy melon. The juice of this melon drips like water. Yes, yum. Did you silver? Oh, a shiny metallic flower of real beauty that only grows on Mekonis. Wait a minute. Are you telling me that there's weird organic mechanical uh, or things that are also mechanical weird. that are supposed to mimic the organic? The black blossom. Small, sharp black flower, widespread but not well liked. That is very pungent. Mm. Andre's having a, I assume, a peanut butter and jelly mm -hmm. tortilla. Mm -hmm. Gold condenser. It's metallic and thus conductive. One hesitates to use it though. Why? Purple lamp. A lamp that emits a purple light. It glows. It, its glow is profoundly mysterious. Crimson gear. A lovely red gear wheel. No one has any idea what it's used for, though. Ooh, first attack plus three. And then the darkness bottle. Melia named this proudly. Darker and deeper than the night. It's got Jafar in it. Don't rub it. Hey. Okay. Well, there's a there's a mechanism for a door in mm. here. Mm -hmm. There we go. I guess that kind of opens it up. Yeah, it opens that up. Okay. But there's also, there was a path to the left that looked interesting. We can go up to. Oh, it is opening the giant gate. Mm -hmm. uh oh, what's that on the other side? Mechon. A fortress unit. But can you go to the left? Yeah, we can go up. No, 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 go to the yeah, right. There was a door that seemed to go inside. Mm-hmm and around. Maybe that's a way for you to bypass the fortress without having to fight it directly. Mm. It seems to be a staircase Possibly. going up and around. But you do have mech on to fight. Yeah, people are asking. Peanut butter in the tortilla? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Wander is weird like that. It's not that weird. It's pretty much all the quality of a peanut butter and jelly. But tortillas just have a flavor to them that... Mm, Works fine. I suppose... I just like them with real bread. Mm -hmm. The new jam is weird. It's too sweet. Oh. Right, because you got a, a different type of raspberry? Mm -hmm. Or what did you get? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got like Artie's small batch raspberry jam. Mm -hmm. I think that's it. The idea of it is good, but it doesn't have the seeds, which I surprisingly enjoy. You do like the seeds. Mm -hmm. Let's just hope you don't get, oh, what are they? Like the intestinal apules and uh, what do they call them? Abscesses or something. Mm -hmm. Diverticulitis. I don't think I'm old, old enough for that to be a legitimate concern yet. I know so many family members that have it. And now they can't eat anything with seeds or even nuts with yeah. sharp 
But yeah. I, I think it's very much an issue if you're older. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you can get severe intestinal infections if one of those seeds gets caught in those. Mm -hmm. Wonder, do you know the cutoff point? It's the core. What do you mean by it? Oh, the cutoff point for the being side able quests. to do anything in the side quests. Mm -hmm. You can't jump on it. I tried. It's a fortress. It was worth a shot. All right. I'm really going to fight it? And then I'm going to fight it. I'm on casual mode. That means I can be casually aggressive. Oh yeah, he eats it exactly like a burrito. Yep. It's not a quesadilla peanut butter and jelly, it's a... This whole area wandered, not just quest. Okay. Maybe I'm not entirely sure what the uh, what the cutoff point we're talking is. Oh, maybe by talking with Dexon you cut off all the previous quests? I don't think so. Good luck. Let's see. It's only four levels above you. Which would have been an issue if I were still playing on normal difficulty. Would it have been ten levels above you? Perhaps. No, if I was on normal difficulty, it would be the same difficulty. Oh. It's just a matter of... Uh, Yeah, it, it's more of a, a matter of, like, trying to do a fight of something this high of a level compared to you. Maybe isn't so bad if you're, like, real good at the game, but I'm, like, passively okay at the game. But yeah, it hits harder on normal and has more HP on normal, which means it would be a much tougher fight. That said, uh, now that Melia has her stone ability, we're actually in uh, kind of a nice spot. What does stone do? It reduces damage. Oh. And you can stack it a bunch of times. Uh, so specifically, if we go to arts. Uh, so because you jumped down, did you miss out on anything that was up above? I don't think so. But yeah, so if you look, it says uh, physical damage down 15%. Oh. Three times, and that is just a 50% damage reduction to the entire party for as long as I keep uh, three stone channels. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Probably doesn't matter too much to you. What doesn't? Well, those are the objects that you have floating above no, your no, head. No, no, the the strategy and that's the, what I was saying. The builds and whatnot. No, it does matter. Because hmm. I I know that she would have say fire, water, water, or you can have different elements or moats above her head. Yeah, I had been stacking a bunch of water earlier, which also seemed to be pretty dang good. Mm -hmm. Bitter broccoli. Bitter broccoli. If broccoli was bitter, I don't think it would be the most popular vegetable in the United States. <laughs> I think the reason why broccoli is so popular is because it is very green. And it's interesting, the stalks of it are crunchy and has some kind of denseness to it but the leaves can absorb so much flavor from whatever sauces or things that you put on them so i can definitely see why people like broccoli so much as a vegetable jeez your legs are toasty I'm always toasty when I'm for some reason, I except when I'm immediately under a air conditioning vent. I guess you have considerably more of the blanket on you at all times, and a long sleeve shirt. Yeah. Oh. Is 
interesting how they've created this labyrinth within the sword itself. I know that the sword had a bunch of design work on it. Yeah, I'm assuming this, this is just the groove work on it. Mm -hmm. It kind of looked like the transistor sword. Kinda. Yeah, a lot of vertical lines running down it. Yeah, and it's thick. It's weird. I really would love to see a transistor get a proper sequel. It wouldn't get really it. really anything left? Or maybe just an expansion. I just felt like the story was super empty. Like, maybe, maybe that's it. Yeah, I, th I think Transistor just needed uh, a couple more, like, cutscenes and interactions with the villains. I feel like Bastion deserves maybe a sequel. Ooh, that's something new. It is. Creepy looking. It looks like a mini-faced Mechon. Defensive Mechon Plus. Flies around swearing at people. <laughs> wow, that got it good. Has an interesting, almost angelic look to it. And it's dead. Yep. Well, that was easy. And it rendered you normal parts. What's that up there? A mini fortress? Could be. Yeah. Go over to the left. Yeah, that thing? Yeah. This looks like there's platforms and such above. There we go. Transistor's final fight was funny to you. I thought it was very okay. I think I just wasn't particularly attached to the villains because I didn't know who the heck they were. And so it didn't feel particularly interesting to me. Where is? I didn't find like finding that two of the villains like died off, off screen. themselves off off mm -hmm. screen, and we missed the note on the noteboard telling us why. Mm -hmm. And so we were just like, "Where'd they go?" And what just do they do? did not get an answer until like after the videos went up. Oh. Ooh, Orion cap. See, I wish there were more quests like this where it's just like, "Go kill the guy," as soon as you get within like range of him. Yeah, very Guild Wars. Yeah, like, give me give me that stuff instead of, like, talk to an NPC to give me a reason to do it. Just be like, all right, mess him up, and I will gladly do so. Or, heck, don't even have the quest. Just make it that the dude himself is worth, like, a stupid amount of EXP. So, like, you could grind against the regular mobs if you really felt like it, but, like, why would you bother? I wonder how they approach the design for some of these mech on. This one looks very much like a crow or a chicken. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I ever saw an art book for OG Xenoblade. Mm hmm I was impressed with the tiny little art art book booklet that they that sent you... along with the Xenoblade Chronicles X1. Mm-hmm. Like, I was hoping, I had been hoping it would be bigger, and I was kind of disappointed in it as a collector's edition, but... Hey, it, it's a little bit better than the Darksiders one that we got, Was it, which wasn't even the full one. There is a full one that's coming out later, but... Oh, you mean the art book. Because mm -hmm. I was like, we got a full-on statuette. Mm -hmm. No, no, our, our statue is really cool. I should probably pay a little bit more attention to collector's editions here and there, just to see if there's anything worth anything. Mm -hmm. I usually don't, but then again, I guess what we really should do is just buy some cool statues instead, instead of getting a collector's edition. Especially because, like, it's always super awkward when I when I do get a collector's edition. Well, the good thing was with the Darksiders Genesis one, they gave you keys anyway, right? Or mm -hmm. did you have to purchase a second game? Or yeah, they gave me keys anyway. Okay. I mean, because immediately if, I had to, like, poke my my PR uh, contact and be like, help, I need another key. And they were like, yeah, here you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the one thing that holds physical media like that back is the fact that if you want to play it on day one, especially with collector's editions, they're not going to get to you in time. Yep. 
I mean, I think it also depends. Because, uh, like, some... Some games definitely had, like, the physical versions go out early. Uh, so... I think it was Final Fantasy VII, the physical versions went out early for a lot of people. And I... I'd say I was a little cranky about it, but I honestly didn't care. Is there a piece of gaming paraphernalia that you wish you had gotten, but missed your chance for whatever reason? Well, I mean, there was that board game. Yeah, but, but we're potentially going to get that anyway. Mm -hmm. Kind of put off because of the virus. Yeah, it's like last time we talked to, uh... Last time we talked to anybody from Stumpton, Stumpton person, they're like... Yeah, we've got this, like, spare Darksiders board game. You want it? And we're like... Yeah, we like Darksiders and yeah. board games. And then, yeah. And then and everything the just went bad. Oh, uh, but other things that... I There is so much that I've missed out on over the years. I really wish I'd been able to get some of that original Lord of the Rings merchandise when they had come out. From the collection. And they still make a couple things, but very few. Hmm. I, I remember ogling. Uh, the little booklets yeah. that, they came, that came with the VHS tapes. Of all the swords and the jewelry. Yep. I wanted those so bad. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, I'm not as in interested. I think I'd prefer more sci-fi-ish stuff. Huh. Like, sci-fi is stuff that could not accidentally be used. Oh, no, 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 no. I understand about the whole swords, but jewelry or the fun props and stuff that aren't weapons. Yeah. Because they had helmets. They had a whole host of things available. Like, other gaming stuff. Well, I had... I have been fortunate with a couple of Kickstarters. Sometimes people put their editions of it that they had gotten with the Kickstarter up on eBay or something. So you live near Weta Workshop, which still oh. makes some Lord of the Rings stuff. It's pretty neat. They yeah. did all the costuming and props for Lord of the Rings. I didn't know they did the costuming and props. We actually ordered a pair of figurines. Yeah, um, we got one of them so far. We have the Gandalf, uh, they call them mini epics. But they're, they're these beautiful vinyl cartoony vinyl figurines. Uh, and yeah. they're, they're quite affordable too, whereas most statuettes are you Fairly know near a hundred dollars. These ones are about thirty. And they're really cute. Unfortunately, we got Gandalf like almost immediately. Gimli, on the other hand, uh like we ordered these like a month ago. Yeah, well the thing is Gimli had to come directly from New Zealand, whereas uh, Gandalf hat was already in a warehouse in the United States. Yep, and because of the, uh... I, like, I almost want to come awesome up... It awesome to live in New Zealand. I, it is, it is one of those countries that I'm like, man, I would live there if I had the opportunity. Your parents and your brother went on a trip. Mm -hmm. But we were in the midst of building your YouTube channel, and we were living out in Kansas, and... Yeah, we had just moved to Kansas, so it was like, eh... You never ship it to work. <laughs> Excuse me. The internet disagrees with you. There are many, many people that have shipped that to work. <laughs> Gosh, this really wants me to play, uh, play Shadow of War, finally. I've never actually done a playthrough of it. No mm. way am I going to have free time for it, but I wanna. Yeah, we chose Gandalf and Gimli because they were among our favorite characters. Also, some of the other characters looked a little creepy. Yeah, like, high cheekbones, if done poorly, can just look ghoulish. Well, also, they had Legolas smiling with a, this mischievous smirk, but it was a little over the top. It seemed like Aragorn was a little bit... I don't want to say soulless. Yeah. But there was something about his eyes I didn't quite like in the preview image. And as much as I like the hobbits, 
I don't really want figurines of them. The only Hobbit I gave a dang about was Gimli. Or not Gimli. Har. Sam. Yeah, Sam. I was all the other say ones, Sam. All the other ones were just kind of there. Like, Pippin... Uh, okay. Recant a little bit. Pippin was pretty good in Return of the King. But mm -hmm. beyond that, all of them were kind of just lame. Like, not gonna lie. I hated... I hated Frodo. Frodo is the... He is the protagonist who is defined by the MacGuffin. It seems like Shulk and this instance has a little bit more agency whereas it seemed like Frodo was tossed about and just reacting with abject horror to everything and and he also I mean he also had that point where he was he felt profound guilt and then of course there were the temptations and for a while yeah he favored Gollum over Sam, and there was the tension there. I, then again, people could say, oh, it's the ring's influence that was getting yeah. to him. But I, I think it just felt like the ring's temptation was not shown well in the book or the movies. That, like, here's this thing that is supposed to be irresistible. Well, the, the whole part of it, with him, though, is that hobbits were supposed to be pure of heart and yeah. less inclined to fall to it. But what they would have with the, the ring is just some kind of, like, eerie zoom-in with a little bit of sound effects on the side. Yeah. And he would be staring at it, just gazing into its depths, and there would be those instances where he's just, just about to put it on his finger, and then, oh, oh. It just made him feel very weak to me. I was a little bit disappointed in him when the volcano, with the volcano scene, well, Mount Doom. Yeah. I mean, kind of unsurprisingly. I mean, but he like, lost a finger for it. It just felt like Sam was carrying him the entire way through. Oh, Sam definitely was. Sam is, many people have said that Sam is the true hero. <laughs> it Maybe part of me is, is very drawn to like weird what if scenarios, like, uh, there, there are straight up people that like have long running theories on how uh, Neville Longbottom in Harry Potter mm -hmm. was also a uh, a potential boy who lived, and that like if Voldemort had wanted to, he absolutely could have pivoted and gone after Neville, and the same story would have happened. Mm. I guess I probably shouldn't talk about. Harry Potter too much as J.K. Rowling is not great. There's mention of Hobbit movies. Yeah, Wander actually hasn't seen the third one, and I have them all on DVD here. Yeah. So we can see the, the I, last of the. I, I I rather liked them. I I know that people say oh they diverted from the books a little bit, but I really did like what th they added to it. I think my only beef purely lay in the fact that they were trying to drum up some kind of weird dwarf Eth elf romance. Oh, you mean with Tariel and Killy? Yeah, it was yeah. a little weird. I think the thing was they... Unfortunately, the Lord of the Rings series is devoid of female characters. I mean, you have Galadriel and you have Eowyn. Arwen wasn't really much of a character in the books, as I recall. They... They had, I think it was Elrond that was supposed to save them initially, but then they made Arwen come yeah. to them instead with the river. I can't fault Tolkien too much, if only because the times that he grew up in. Mm -hmm. I don't remember hearing too much about him being terribly sexist, so much as just like... That's just... Well, in those times, I suppose women weren't really warriors. Though well, yeah, because he, he was he was in World War One, World War One. Yeah, though he, I mean, Eowyn did. She, well, yeah, went on the battlefield and she killed the the king, the witch king. Yeah, no, this is actually a very good point. That realistically, uh, that actually is probably some of the most progressive writing. Um. With the, in a book in that era. Oh, I know, and their uh, painters have been painting that scene throughout the years. Like, 
I, I think if she had overall been a more interesting character beyond that scene, give or take. And the unfortunate thing with her, too, is that there was that odd love triangle with her, Aragorn, and Arwen, where, I mean, so actually, this is a good situation. Eowyn is Melia. Yeah. Where, because, imagine it, I mean, hey, you even have, like, Shulk with the awesome sword, who is, you know, the chosen heir of the Monado and everything, like Aragorn mm -hmm. with Narsil. And he has this childhood friend that he wants to save and loves and whatnot. So, I mean, Arwen, it was implied that she was dying, at least in the movie, because the magic was fading and the elves would, would have to depart into the West. But... She was definitely interested in Aragorn, but his heart belonged to another. And then they implied that she ended up with Faramir? Maybe? I don't know. My headcanon is Faramir was actually the one that beat up Gollum in uh, Mount Doom and chucked the one, one ring into the volcano. Wait, why do you say that? Uh, at some point, we should play Return of the King, like the video game. The video game? Okay. Because it's, like, actually a legitimately really good game. Uh, oh, is that where you can choose whichever character you want to play? Sort of. Wait, except why for... do they make Faramir a playable character? He was the secret character. He was a secret character. Yeah, so it was normally you just played as the Fellowship. But actually, you didn't get to play as Boromir, obviously. Um, but you got to play as the rest kind of in their stories, but there was, you know, embellishments and some other goofy bits. It was legitimately, like, a really fun game, and my brother and I, my brother and I loved it. With the exception of the Sam and Frodo thing, which blew. It just was not fun to play as them, because they were weak, weak as hell. And so you get to the final boss fight against Gollum in Mount Doom, mm -hmm. and the little sucker just ruins the two of them. <laughs> Like, I, I mean, it kind of makes sense when it comes down to it. Neither of them are fighters. Uh, whereas Gollum has been fighting and surviving for freaking forever. Ah! Why are you... You're bathing in the ether, and it's deadly, apparently. Yeah. No matter, it just sucks the ether out of you like osmosis with water. Uh, let's see. But so, specifically, uh, the final uh -oh, boss... Uh-oh, uh-oh. Dumban. Oh, okay. He's, he'll be, he'll be he's fine. Back. Uh, but so, are you uh, coming? I'm kind of stuck on the ceiling there, oh, but there we go. now he's back. Uh, but so it was so freaking hard to fight, uh, Gollum, but, but, what, the but yeah? Chell, I have no idea why you're ogling me. I noticed that you've been saying freaking an awful lot in the last couple weeks, or a couple oh. days especially. I've... It's being used as a filler word. Yeah, I cycle filler words. That's, <laughs> it's better than using um if I can. <laughs> Very true. Uh, speaking of, but so, we were trying to beat Gollum, and we spent like an afternoon trying to beat the little bugger, and I don't think we wanted to go grind, or maybe it wasn't possible for us to go grind. Did you have levels that you had to Yeah, acquire? Yeah, you actually leveled up, you'd earn rewards, you'd spend them on upgrades, but like, no matter what, the hobbits just sucked, and there wasn't a whole lot you could do to fix them. So we cheated, and unlocked Faramir. Mm -hmm. And Faramir, because he doesn't belong in any of the story sections of the game. He was the only available character. He was playable in all of them. So, uh, huh. Faramir came to the rescue in Mount Doom and absolutely clowned Gollum and kicked <laughs> him into the volcano in, like, no time at all. Didn't take any damage. And, you know, here's two slobbering hobbits just trying their best to follow his majestic lead. And it was so good. <laughs> it was so good. If we ever, if we ever play it, we are doing that out of solidarity for my childhood. Because <laughs> it was so funny. 
So you could choose characters to bring with you into different levels, but if they were... So, for example, you, uh, for a decent chunk of the story, you got to play as Aragorn, Legolas, or Ghibli, and so just, you know, pick which ones you want to play as. Mm -hmm. I like these quests where it's just like, hey, here's a dude in the area, kill him. But say, while Gandalf is indisposed while he transforms into Gandalf the White as opposed to Gandalf the Grey, he wouldn't have been usable. I think not normally. I uh, it's been it's been, gosh, almost. It's probably been like fifteen years and since I played it. As so I recall, he was at the Battle of Minas Tirith, correct? Yeah. And it was Mary that was with Eowyn. On the battlefield. And then, oh, whoa, whoa, wait. Didn't Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli lead a force up to the gates of Mordor? I, I think so. Again, it's been a while. I read the books in fourth grade and I haven't been back since. I'd love to watch the movies again. I would too. I thing is, I'd want to put time and effort into the extended versions because they oh, had some definitely. beautiful I've, shots of New Zealand. I've never seen the extended versions of the latter two films, but I remember in our one of our creative writing classes, we watched a bit of the first, and it was it was interesting because they added so much to even the introduction in Hobbiton of the Shire, you know? Mm -hmm. And they had a lot of moments where even just the hobbits were traveling alone i i only saw the first like hour and a half i, I think of it mm -hmm. uh before um before i had to go because i was at a study hall and they just put it on at the end of the year uh, mm -hmm. and it was lovely and i wanted more of it i wouldn't mind getting really nice dvd the extended editions of them. I wonder if there's just a Blu-ray with all of them. There probably is a Blu-ray with them all. Because back at home, for Fellowship of the Ring and the Two Towers, we still have VHS. <laughs> I think it was... Did, did they come out in 2005? Star Wars Episode 3 and Return of the King. Because I remember those were the first two, one of the, some of the first DVDs in our collection were the were those section, the, the ends of the trilogies. Of, it was our Episode 1 and Episode 2 for Star Wars is VHS as well as the original trilogy because they're the original, original theatrical releases of the original trilogy. I'm gonna step away for a second. Mm -hmm. I'm really glad we turned this on casual mode. <laughs> Once again proving, I am the filthiest casual. <laughs> this feels good. This area is legitimately pretty damn large. I wish it was all black metal instead of this kind of weird pseudo-rusted stuff. Yeah. Like, make it really shiny. Because this looks no different than the earth that we've been running around on the on Bionis. Yeah, like, I would much rather that all the grass be, like, silvery. And you even have to avoid it because it's spiky and it hurts. Right. Like the flowers that we picked up. It's like... It's a neat area, but it's not its not speaking to me in the same way that, like, a lot of the biological areas did. That's the extended Blu-rays were on sale for, like, $52 on Amazon. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Have to take a look. Bam. 
I like it how she has a couple of pseudo wrestling moves where she just like dive kicks <laughs> people. It's great. Uh huh. I can't believe that they're already making an, an Amazon Prime Lord of the Rings television series. I, it's, it's it's so odd that usually there would be twenty plus years, at least a whole generations distance between it's remakes, because streaming but... has opened up the movie industry in such a wild manner i don't know it's one of those things where the way that they were done i can't imagine seeing a new cast i but i think it's it's a different cast in a different time I, I thought they were redoing the Fellowship of the Ring. Are they? I hope not. We'll have to look into it. I thought they were just doing redoing Lord of the Rings. Because the smart thing would be to just constantly do side stories. But, like, but there isn't that much side content aside from the, what, this Cimmerillion and... Oh, I mean, maybe some no, 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 like there's the tons. It's just almost none of it is usable in terms of media format without well, editorialization. There's, there's no script for it. Yeah, there, there's no direct script, but like, Shell, you know, how I spent four hours yesterday writing like a, an outline, a 20 page outline for one story oh, that's Tolkien fairly detailed. probably has hundreds of pages of things similar to Thousands. That. The mm -hmm. man dedicated his life to world building. Yeah, yep. to world building, character building, all sorts of stuff. He had all sorts of books ready to go. Uh, not written and so on and so forth, but yeah, extra stuff is myth and backstory. Like, you you straight up could, if you wanted to and you were respectable about it, you could probably massively, you massively did. expand Middle-Earth's lore and stories in the same way that, uh, let's, let's go with uh, the Mandalorian. You know, you could keep pushing it and the groundwork is already there it's just the problem is the risk of ruining it is so high mm -hmm.